Senator Candy Smith. No, my name is Candy Smith, but you know, I'm serving as a senator for Edgecombe and Pitt Counties. So I thank you so much. Oh, I didn't just gonna make it. But thank you so much for coming. I'm having what I call a listening tour. So many times we hear people say, I wish I had known. And so our job as elected officials is to make sure we keep you informed. So it's budget time. And everybody has a need, I'm sure. Um, but we don't often get a chance to voice that need. And so what I want to do on this tour was make it to um, both counties and have several stops and allow the citizens to be able to, to share with me things of interest that you have that you would like to see us put in that budget. So um, I, I do start by saying I don't make any promises, but I fight hard. Okay. So um, I would like to start by making sure that we know who all the elected officials are because I think that's um, the most courteous thing to do because when I show up to things I want people to know who I am because mm -hmm. these people are serving you. So we're going to start with me. I think everybody here knows me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so thank y'all for coming. Thank you so much for opening it up to us. Yeah, and we're going around the room this way. Yeah. Johnson, you want to go right now? Thank you so much for joining us. Austin Avery, Commissioner here in Pine Top. I'm sure most of folks here know me. Okay. Well, now I know you, Austin. Thank you so much. <laughs> Joyce Braxton, I'm Commissioner out of Maxfield. Paul Lewis, Commissioner for Maxfield. Jane Wooten Giles, Commissioner for Maxfield. Or the East and Silver Advisor Board for Pine Top. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Um, it, is, it is good to have um, all of you here. And um, before you leave, I will ask to make sure that you, you know, on this side, you have the, the uh, sheet to put your name and number and all that stuff. One of the things I like to do is I do a, a newsletter. Every Thursday, I send that out. It has information in it that I think is uh, beneficial. And it also shares um, events that may be happening in your area. So I always ask you to keep me informed of those things as well. And I put those in the newsletter so people can know. I think at the last meeting we had last week in um, Tarboro, someone said, that was our phone bag you put in there. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I was like, if it's happening, you know, mm -hmm. people need to know. And so I try to do what I can to share that as well. Now, the thing about a listening session is that means my job is to listen to you instead of you listening to me. Many times we come in as elected officials and we want to tell you what we're doing. And I don't have time for all that. I need y'all to be able to tell me some of those things that, that you want. Now, my assistant was very nice to make sure that I have a little fact sheet here, just in case there's some questions that I might need to answer. Um, I, I do 
have this available and I'm willing to answer those, but I want to start by saying um, this new district is Pitt and Edgecombe County, and if you look inside the brochure, you'll see the committees that I'm on, um, transportation, education, right on the very, very um, inside, but also agriculture, energy, and environment, as well as appropriations on agriculture, natural, and economic resources. So when you start looking at the water, um, if you start looking at farmland, I mean, all of that falls under that agriculture, energy, and environment. So um, I think that's a good thing because in eastern North Carolina, that's pretty big. So I wanted to make sure that I was on that committee. And so um, I will now turn it over to y'all. What questions do you have? She <laughs> <laughs> said, how much money can you get? <laughs> right. Well, I mean, that is that is a great question, and I'm pretty sure it's a question that everybody has. Um, I don't know if they would just, you know, open up the windfall, but we have been doing some bragging at the state about the uh, surplus that we have. And so there's no need to have a surplus if we're not trying to meet some of the needs. Mm -hmm. But the other part of it is, if they don't know what the needs are, it's hard to meet them, right? Right. And so that's why I wanted to come and, and speak with you all, to, to see those things that you think are important, those things that you think that we should be paying attention to. I realize that a lot of times small towns don't have that voice. And we got the Mecklenburgs or the Wake Counties, and everybody hears that. But you know what? They got enough tax base to have that money. So some of the smaller towns who want to grow, we need to make sure that you have a voice. I can tell you, if I'm nothing else, I am a big voice. Um, I don't know, maybe because I had a big mouth, I don't know. But I, I, I like to stand strong and make sure I'm standing for the um, people and what you guys want. So before you um, go to our questions, can you fill us in in regards to the vote that you said that you just had? I think it was in regards to Medicaid expansion. Oh, she said, let's get straight to Medicaid expansion. Okay, so um, the Medicaid expansion, the House and the Senate, they passed it. But what happens is the bill gets passed over to the other house, right? Just to see, because it's got to pass both in order to make it happen. So what they do is they come together and we have a conference committee. And then with that conference committee, they, they look at it and say, I can, I can take this, oh, I can't take that, I can take this, I can't take that. And once they figure that out, then we have one bill that we vote on. So that bill is HB 76, and that is in the House right now. So today, we actually took the vote for the second reading, because it was already read in, so we took the vote for the second reading. So it takes three readings in order for it to be in. So tomorrow, it's going to be the third reading. And with that, we'll be... Um, will be in the point of passing Medicaid expansion. Now, I still always hold my breath until it happens, because you know it don't happen until it happens. Right. But I can tell you on the floor today, um, the individuals who were supporting the bill and were bringing it forth got up and said this has been over 10 years that there's been this fight for Medicaid expansion. They said that this is the right time. Um, we don't want to lose the money because it's a $1.9 billion um, bonus if we sign up by a certain time. That's why they're trying to do it very quickly. But they also tied the budget into it um, because they just, you know, sometimes you want to get what you want to get. So they tied the budget into it, and they wanted to make sure that um, we all know that it's going to pass. Because I think it's like $35 million a year after that that we'll be getting um, every year, which is good money. And the best thing um, they talked about, well, we're not losing as a state because then the hospitals will pay that little 10% because they're going to be now getting the monies that they've been looking for before. Now, you all know that we've had some closings of um, some of the hospitals in this area in eastern North Carolina. We, we cannot afford that. We don't want that. We don't need that. Okay? And so um, we had five. Maybe if we already had it passed, we would have had just one. Um, I, I did speak with CEO of Biden, and he's of um, ECU Health, excuse me. The name has changed a couple times. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, and he said that um, one of the things is we were $42 million in the hole, so they had to make a decision. And he was trying to close some that had people within 20 miles of another uh, location. So they spoke very highly of it on the floor, and it was a bipartisan support on the floor today. So we had Republicans and Democrats both to say 
that we're passing this bill. One person said there was only nine people in that um, Senate chamber that was there when it first started. But we are all very excited that we're at this point. They will have some work requirements, and I don't know exactly what the work requirements are, but we many people gave examples of people are working, but they're just falling below that threshold. And it's costing way too much to try to get individual insurance if it's $1,000 a month or $600 a month. So those were the points that was brought up on the floor today. And everybody was in unison and everybody's excited. So what happened was the Speaker of the House and the Speaker Pro Tem of the Senate, they got together and um, sat down with those committees and they came up with the decision to make sure that we're going to pass it. So right now, fingers crossed that we're passing it. Tomorrow will be the day. And the chambers were full, I can tell you. When, when everybody stops and they know the things about the past, they stop and they come in. So everybody is in there. Um, if you want to kind of see what it looks like, you can always um, look it up and go online and look it up. And it is HB 76. Let me see. I might have a link. I mean, I have a copy of it because I was just trying to read it and make sure I go through it. But this, this is what we're voting on. And I ask people to make sure that you are paying attention whenever it comes out of what you're signing up for only because there's some plans that will have like mental health with it and some plans may not. And I want to make sure people are signing up for the best fit for you. So I know we're excited because we've been waiting for it over you know, a decade, but I want you to read it and make sure that you're signing up for the right one. And um, if there's questions that you have, don't hesitate to reach out to my office. My number is on that flyer. It's my assistant, he, he is willing to help and to lead you to whomever you might need to be led to, to help you with answering those questions. So that's what we voted on today. I even took a picture of me pressing my green button. <laughs> so when I learned how to work the phone, because I will tell y'all, my phone died Saturday. I had a Blackberry. And I was probably the last person on earth with a Blackberry. And I said, I'm going to get me a new phone today. And I took a picture and posted it. And then I, I was walking into the church for a fundraiser, and I was going to take another picture, and it was done. So if I had your number, just text me. <laughs> and, and, you know, give me your name so I can put it back in my phone. And if not, if you put it on those lists, then I'll have it. But that's where we are. I'm excited about it because I get to be in the room when it happens. And so there's over 600,000 um, people in North Carolina that's going to be covered. And that's why I'm excited. Because I think that everybody deserves the right to have health care. Everybody deserves the right to be able to be taken care of. And so that's one of the major things that I was deciding to fight for when I came up here. So I'm, I'm excited. And I hope you guys are as well. But I will tell you, when my newsletter come out on Thursday, I think the topic is going to be Medicaid expanding. I might not put anything else in the news. <laughs> so if you look on the back, I'm just going to say the same thing probably. But um, it will be out in there as well. So that's what we were voting on. And our sessions on Tuesday and Wednesdays are at 4 o'clock. And on Thursday, sessions at 12. So um, usually we have one or two meals and we get out like 4.30 or something like that. And I knew I said, well, I got plenty of time. But when we got out, it was like 5. You wanted to speak. I said, don't say that out loud. So then I jumped in the car. And for some reason, I don't know how to work my new phone yet, so I don't know how to work the GPS on it, so I just took off. And I was talking to council member um, um, Jordan over there, and I said, um, he called me, and I said, well, do I go like I'm still going through Rocky Mountain? He's like, yeah. And I said, get on 43. So I stopped at Fred's Bull Club, mm -hmm. and I saw somebody. I said, I'm trying to get the pine top. He said, follow me. I said, thank you. So I followed him, and he said, when I go right, you go left. <laughs> so I went left and, and came on because I wasn't going to let nothing stop me. Yeah. And I was still trying to drive speed limit because it was a truck in front of me. I refused to pass it. I said, take your time because I prefer to get here instead of having you come to a funeral. There you go. So yeah, right. uh, I'm excited to be able to be here with you. And I know one of the concerns um, was water infrastructure, especially for um, pine tops. So we came here the other day yeah. and announced that $7.9 million that was coming from ARPA funds and state funds that was for um, the infrastructure of the water here. And Edgecombe, it was another million dollars because it was some homes that was like, you know how you can touch something, but you can't touch it? Mm -hmm. That's how it was. And so now they're going to have the opportunity to be connected um, to the water system 
So we're, we're excited about that. And I know that's been a big thing for a lot of people, but for over a period of time, infrastructure dies, right? It, yes. doesn't, it just rots out and you gotta do things. But when you're in a small we community, we, we gotta update them, we gotta fight for them. So that's that's one of the things I'm very excited about that mm -hmm. we were able to And we are too, very mm -hmm. much. And a lot of our citizens I have a quick question. Trouble. All the water breaks we have so often, it's incredible. Well, so, so that happy. money is couldn't come at a better time. Good. I have a quick question in regards to digital inclusion um, funding, because I know we're talking about uh, so the digital inclusion program is making sure homes, churches, local communities, underprivileged folks all around have access to, to broadband and internet. Um, what type of funding are we expecting to see for that for the county? So um, there's already a great grant that that was awarded, and we I explained this to um, Tarboro the other night. There was a great grant that was awarded, but because the place who um, was getting the uh, monies, they were what do you call double dipping, mm -hmm. and they weren't supposed to do that. And so the houses the, in two, in two places. So again, they had the houses in two places. Mm -hmm. right. And so because they were doing that, we had to hold everything up. Mm -hmm. And so now they're straightening all of that out. And so as soon as it happens, it'll be in that newsletter. We're going to put it out and let you guys know. So we have funding. And I spoke with the um, Secretary of Information Technology, right? I just, I wanted to know because I live in, like, the, the edge. I live right off of 33. I'm, I'm actually, like, 22 miles from um, Tarboro. And, you know, many people don't know I'm just that close. Um, I sometimes have issues with the Internet, same thing. And during the pandemic, I think that exacerbated a lot of things. And people were trying to work from home. Mm -hmm. Kids were trying to do their work from home. And um, I called the company. Suddenly, it's Optima now. And I said, you want me to support you, but I can't even get on my committee meeting. And then immediately they came to trying to make sure. But it's not about me, though. It's about everybody. Right. And so we've been putting buses in different places for hot spots, and we shouldn't have to do that. So he said, believe it or not, we got enough money right now. He said, I can't even ask y'all for more money because we, we got a lot of money. Because across the board, bipartisan support, all of us want broadband. Because all of us, in all areas, we realize what we did not have. Now, he said the challenge is getting it into the more rural areas. So what they have to do, like we as a state don't put it in. What we do is we partner with different companies and things for them to put it in. So we have to make sure that we're finding the right people that's going to work with us to be able to go out to some of the more rural areas and put them in. And so those are the challenges that we're looking at now, although we have the funds. Right. Mm -hmm. And they were working on that in Macclesfield today. Good. I love it. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying, but when you see them, don't be surprised. I can't say it's going to happen real fast, but it's supposed to happen. Yeah. And they were working on it in Macclesfield. And, and I'm gonna keep pushing it in our area because I just want to know. I'm gonna say keep me posted on the areas that you complete, and that's at least how I know I can keep you guys informed. Uh -huh. And if they're doing something or not doing something. Uh -huh. So when they start the construction, it might take a little time, but they are committed and they're working on it. Well, they will work every so much. I'm working. Well, so that's good. We need all that we can get. Yeah, right. That's right. So, so now there are no parameters as it relates to how far out from a municipality you're going to go. Or is that is from my there? from my understanding? No. Okay. Now, that's just me, my understanding, because mm -hmm. it should not be. Okay. I just know that he said there's a challenge because of the more rural areas mm -hmm. and getting places. And I spoke with uh, Edgecombe and Martin, the, uh, the electric, electric company, company. Martin, yesterday. I met with them for a couple of hours, and they were telling me about um, a company that's been going out and connecting people and. Um, they've not accepted any grants, but if, if they had like five people on the road and they said, well, we want it, they were working with them at a reasonable cost to well, make sure. Mm -hmm. the one here in town, like, mm -hmm. two days. Well, so that's it. Yes. yes. That's what it's yeah. And so uh, what I'm trying to do is make sure we get in contact with them, because if, if that's somebody who's willing to do that, then we can, yeah, you know, see. Can you send them reality? Yeah, we can put you in touch with Wells. Oh, mm -hmm. we we need that, absolutely. Yeah. We are. Yeah. No, we are. Yeah. I mean, because I think that would be a good contact because if he's already working in the area and they're doing the work, then why not make, it, make sure someone like him is connected and then they're, you know, going to the more rural areas to make it happen. How about for P and Green? P and Green electric company. Mm -hmm. 
right? I stay in edge cone when I'm on a picket train, mm -hmm. not edge cone mountain. And I know when, uh, what is the the council? Um, when they was coming that way, they said they were charging them. P and Green were charging them too much money to uh, to connect to them. Right. So Somebody they changed their clothes or something. Right. It was a lot of money they and, and they would not bring it. And that's what I heard the other day. I think someone in the room told me it was like five thousand seven hundred dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Maybe fifty seven. I don't know. It was very high. Yes. And I was like, what? Mm -hmm. So. What we're looking at as a state now, I don't know how long it's going to take because you know from Murphy to Manio, right? We got hundred counties, it's a whole lot. It's going to take time to get it everywhere, and it's going to take time for them to contract with the individuals doing it. But I do know that they're going to be contracting with the companies to do it. That's why I wanted to make sure I got that information oh, absolutely. because I think that anybody in the area that's willing to work and expand it in that area, we need them to be connected to. They got the money, ain't no ain't no excuse, especially if somebody's doing the work. I think the problem will be to expand it towards the south end is going to be picking the green and green because they, they, were, they refused to let them use their phone. And that's on the south end of Macclesfield yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. Right, that's where I Yeah, call. they couldn't go, they said, because they won't let them use their phones. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we had met with some people. You're talking about pick green, I think. Mm -hmm. they, uh, yeah, pick green from what Will told me was. Right. Mm -hmm. Not like it's going to work. It's going right. to work. With verbs, easy to work with. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but he couldn't get in where pit green from what he told me. Yeah, because a lot of citizens in, in Macclesfield were walking and they couldn't pick two. Mm -hmm. I think. Pit green, okay. green is gone. Though, right? No, they, they're still there. Oh, well, that's, that's yeah, that's, they actually have a service area that yeah. is around Chris. But one of the good things about it is if they're trying to get it everywhere, that's going to include Pitt and Green. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know who they're going to contract with to do it, mm -hmm. but the money that you guys would think that they're asking you to pay, mm -hmm. that should be something that's from the state. So we're trying, we're trying to get it everywhere. So I'll get as much updated as I can and, and keep getting it and, and letting you guys know um, everything that I find out about what they're doing with it. And I don't know how fast they're going to go, but I just know I'm excited when he said that he had enough money. Because most of the time, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. but, uh, I'll yeah. say that the county did apply for a great grant and got approved for a great grant that included parts of Pine Top. Um, but they have, with Mr. Denny, I think is his name, from the Information Technology State or something, he came and talked to the commission and, um, and us at the county, and they ended up putting it on hold because... There are some, there's two, the addresses in both, in that, in the great grant they have with us and a great grant with someone else, and they have to yeah. redo it. But we had Pine Tops in our, um, as a part of our great grant, great grant, parts of Pine Tops that are not um, serviced by Mr. Bird, by the okay. county. So if you're like Nancy J, you can't, can't be fight. outside. Yeah, right. Right. No. Couldn't <laughs> have it. So yeah, that was put on hold for a little bit, because mm -hmm. we was like, what? And then they're figuring it out, though, mm -hmm. and hopefully it will soon. That should happen. I have one question. Mm -hmm. Did uh, Medicare have to be tied to the budget? In other words, if the government's side is veto the veto the budget, no, uh, he ain't veto. Veto. But see, the, uh, do you think do you think they got put something in there that government don't yeah. like? Well, they, they, yeah, they always, they're going to always put something in the government yeah. don't like. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. There's always going to be yeah. something because when you say I'm going to tie it to the budget, mm -hmm. but you put Medicaid expansion in there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you right now, the governor will not veto that. Right. And even if he did, it comes back to us, and he's not going to make that. Because we have been fighting for over 10 years for Medicaid expansion, so it's going to happen. I think more like they were worrying about the Republican might put something in the, uh, in the budget that won't, get, won't benefit a, a part of North Carolina certain areas that we've ever seen. They, but, uh, it's, but that's uh, always going to happen. But also, we got to be looking at those two leaders, too, of them. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the House and the Senate. If they don't do right, then we have to rephrase them if it's in a way possible. <laughs> well, the thing about it is, they're accountable now. They, yeah. they have a press conference, mm -hmm. and they let everybody know they was going to expand it. Right. So mm -hmm. imagine they got up and said that, and then all of a sudden they changed their mind. Right. That just wouldn't be a good thing for them no, at all. Wouldn't. But the vote um, was 48. 
to two. And we had 50 people in the Senate. So it was only two no's. So that means it was bipartisan support mm -hmm. with Republicans and Democrats for that to happen. So it was 48 to two vote. That's a good one. So I just wanted to make sure you guys know that. And once we get through with it, it goes back to the House and they concur or not concur. So um, tomorrow we're going to have our third vote on in the Senate. Because it started over in the House and it, you know, came over to us and then it's going to go back to them. And it's going to be a done deal. No, that's good. Then we're going to have confetti yeah. everywhere. I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the one you're talking about services, um, tell me about any kind of reforms that are being done with the mental health system. Um, one of my main concerns is mental health services being provided to children um, in, in, in the educational system. Um, the protocol right now is such that by the time they are uh, approved for mental health services, school year's up. So it's like a cycle and they're going back. And then my other part is where are sites that are available uh, for for children with behavioral issues or mental health issues, and also where are sites available for adults with these issues? And then, and then my last concern is this, is that I know that they have developed a statewide new number, like the 911, I don't know what it is, 988 or something. They got a statewide one, and they have a federal one. But m my question is, if you are di if you have mental health issues and you're digressing, are you gonna have sense enough to call these numbers? <laughs> so let me let me just I'm I'm gonna start backwards. Okay. Um, I am many people don't know I'm a qualified mental health professional. I've been in the mental health field working for a number of years, so um, over twenty years. And I do know that there is a need. Um, one of the things I am is I'm very excited that people are recognizing that <coughs> mental health is health. And far too long, um, we were talking about health, but we were separating it from mental health. But again, COVID exacerbated a lot of things, right? We saw that children had increased rates of suicide as well as adults, and there was a lot of things going on. I mean, um, murder suicides, I mean, everything. So even in the General Assembly, we have recognized the need for mental health because that was the talk before we even got out of session. That's all they talked about was mental health, mental health, mental health. That's why they wanted to take the mask off so you can smile and see people and interact and all that. So we just passed a bill in the Senate that would change, I don't know if you know Butner. Uh -huh. um, we're making that into a facility for you. Um, we, we realized that it was underutilized so they changed that over, and in the process of working that, and they're going to start it with being like 54 beds, mm -hmm. but then it can go up to like 90 or something like that. So that's one thing, because we realized we just didn't have any places when we needed that. Mm -hmm. So that is... That used to be a uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. long time ago. Uh -huh. I remember it when I was in the field. Yeah. Um, and I know in um, Pitt County, they're building one, but it's in... Wilmington, they're working with, um, I think it's Arcadia or something like that, and they're working on one for children. So I can't say off the top of my head exactly the ones for adults, because I do know, like at our hospital, we do have places for our, that our adults can go to. But what we've been experiencing, unfortunately, is the children have been going to the emergency room and staying there sometimes 30 days. Yes, because I used to work in a hospital. And there's no reason for a child to be like that in that emergency room. Yeah. And then DSS has been telling us that they have had the youth to come to their places and basically been almost living there because mm -hmm. they've been having no place to go. So we're trying to make a concerted effort, bipartisan on both sides, to make sure we work on that. Um, we had a tour that went around, and it was uh, uh, Senator Bergen was promoting that tour with the uh, Cody Kinsley, who is the Secretary of Health and Human Services. And we were listening to the needs and the concerns of a lot of people. Um, and people from Cherry Hospital, like you had staff coming from everywhere. You had a lot of um, citizens coming from everywhere. So it was all over because we're trying to make a concerted effort to work on those needs. So um, hold on. It's coming. I just That's why I ask you when you're signing up for your plans, make sure you, you look at what you're looking for. Because I think it used to be taboo. 
to talk to somebody and get a therapist. Right. I'm, I'm trying to find me a therapist right now myself. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because we have so much that we carry on ourselves, right? Yes. And we grow up with what goes on in the home stays at home. Well, if you keep that, that stuff bogs down on you. Yes. And then people just, you know, have mental breaks. Mm -hmm. But to be able to go and talk to somebody, and they ain't your friends that's going to go and tell everybody else, woo! <laughs> I mean, that's a blessing. Yeah. So those are the things that, that we need to make sure we're promoting and encouraging people and not talk like it's a taboo or a bad thing for them to get that assistance. And so that's why we're trying to do it. Now, I did introduce um, a bill in both Pitt and Edgecombe to have a um, school nurse in every school. And someone else said they introduce it statewide. Because we want to make sure that if the students in schools have issues, they at least have someone they can go and talk to. Yes. And the nurses a lot of time can direct them if we need someone with um, psychology or psychiatrist. They can help direct that process. But if we don't have a nurse in every school and you got to travel from all these different schools so today they're here, tomorrow they're somewhere else, then my problem might be today. Uh -huh. Then what? That's exactly and what, and one of my concerns is that some of the schools do have a nurse, a psychologist, a counselor, whatever, mm -hmm. that uh, is able to talk with the students. But the process itself, in order to get them some real help, mm -hmm. because they do seriously have some mental health issues or some behavioral issues mm -hmm. that need to be addressed, by the time they, they, they get all this paperwork filled out, they got to be written up like six times or something like that. So, and that, that's what I was saying. By the time you finish with the process, school is out. So by the time they come back to school and start acting up again, you know, they got to start the process, school is out. So there's something wrong with the process that needs to be looked at in order to get them immediate help. It shouldn't be that long, you know, because it's, 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 it's resulting, I think, and you know, we've, we've had several children to be literally killed you know, and, and you kind of thinking it was some behavioral issues that was behind that. Mm -hmm. And not only that, it's disturbing the, the classrooms. The teachers are stressed out. They don't want yes. to come because they know they got those bad children <laughs> up in there. So it has a negative impact all over. And I, I just think it's something that really, really needs to be looked at in the educational system. When you have a crisis, it's no, it's no quick way to get on. That's though. right. That's right. Well, what I will do is I will take this back because I am on the education committee uh -huh. and see because we do have some people who um, have worked in the school system. Some have been administrators, principals, um, assistant superintendents. So we'll try to see um, what process is currently being used and talk with health and health and human services as well okay. to see what process is being used because their their job is to be over the companies to regulate the companies that go and do that in schools so that we can um, expedite that whole process because it shouldn't be that long that school is out. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Kim, I know bringing it down to a more grassroots process, mm -hmm. I know sure. we're going to talk to the doctor who wants to know that he's trying to help. But how do we get down to a faith base and a community level? And I know that uh, he's been working with us on this whole concept around faith-based initiatives uh, with telemedicine and uh, the whole process around agriculture and food for health. Uh, how can we catch some of these processes from a community level that we can correct before it gets to school? You know, so we've been really looking at how we do that. What are some of the resources that we can put at that level to make it happen? Well, I think that the process, um, well, part of it will have to be the partnership with the community. Because if you guys are on the ground, faith-based people are on the ground to be able to do the work. But I think that you would just have to make sure that you would identify yourselves to us mm -hmm. so that we can look at what programs that's being offered that we can possibly fund. Because I think that it takes a village. Yes. It's not going to be just that one route. It, it's going to take a village in order to get these things done. So, um, you know, let me know those people who are interested. And I will make sure that I take it back because we are going to be having a meeting um, with health, health and Human Services 
Uh, we, we was going to have it today, but since we were voting on Medicaid expansion, mm -hmm. they wanted to be in the room, yeah. so they canceled yeah. that meeting. Yeah. So we'll, we'll have a meeting, and I'll, I'll make sure I share that. I know with the um, healthy opportunities and things yes. of that nature, mm -hmm. they're doing it, um, but we might have to see how, how we can still trickle that down to looking at issues like behavior issues mm -hmm. so those students who go to school are not wearing the teachers out or other students or even bullying or even you know doing things to harm themselves. Mm -hmm. So we, we can talk about that. Because what I'll do is I'll take the suggestions back and we gotta put our heads together and the staff they're the professionals. They're in the field. Mm -hmm. So when we give them the information they try to work on these things mm -hmm. and it takes time because you know it's, it, it's slow. I ain't gonna lie to you. Oh, yeah. But we, we want them to at least work on it and do some things. But it's still gonna take the um, cooperation of the community those who are willing to work, yeah. so we'll work from there. And then next Wednesday, make sure when you come up yeah. that you mention again, because we have um, the farmers are being invited to come up next Wednesday. What time? One o'clock. At one o'clock to um, talk with us because, you know, we've had some, um, a lot of the black farmers say, well, we, we are being left out. Mm -hmm. And so we want to make sure that we're included. And so we've been trying to make sure that we are including the black farmers in the process because they've been left out. So we're trying to have a meeting so we can hear the concerns and make sure that we um, speak with them about what we can do because I love eggs and bacon. <laughs> and I just want to make sure that all farmers have what they need. By this. But if you look at the biggest part of our economy in North Carolina, is agriculture. Uh -huh. okay? So I was on the committee when I was in the house and um, had a chance to take a tour because someone got up and said, she don't care about us farmers. And I was looking at them like, really? And that's what I was telling them. I, Man, I love to eat, what you talking about? <laughs> and so I said, um, he said, maybe you want to take a tour so you can see what we do. I said, I sure do. Mm -hmm. We just have to make sure we work in partnership together. So we took a big tour and we got a chance to learn a lot about what they do and understand what the challenges are. Mm -hmm. So we always have a farm bill that's passed every year. And so that's why I tell people, make sure that you are making your voice heard because when we have that farm bill, there's a lot of things in that farm bill that affects all of the farmers and we want to make sure that we're looking at everybody because we're all working collaboratively to feed all of us. Okay. I'm glad you mentioned DHHS. Mm -hmm. um, what is uh, Angela Bryant's um, role? And, and see, that's what people don't understand. They need to know who all the opponent people and people in places because she can come to your meeting and explain what's going on in the DHHS. Yes. I was on a meeting with her Saturday morning. Okay. You don't meet with everybody. Oh, yeah, I don't yeah, be like yeah. you and I go with <laughs> But, but um, I, I spoke with her today. So she's over the equity department. So she, she works a lot with making sure that we are across the board, that, that people are getting what they need. Yeah, she's out of Rocky Mount, if people don't know. Yeah, she, she was the senator um, out of Rocky Mount. And mm -hmm. so she is now working within the department. And so when it comes to health and human services, so um, Medicaid expansion, let's say it's being rolled out. She was wanting to make sure the funds are being equitably rolled out mm -hmm. in all areas. We don't want one area that's, you know, got it, all the money already to get everything and the areas that don't have it ain't getting nothing. Mm -hmm. We don't want that. And so that's what her job is. And she is willing to come to any meeting to um, speak with anybody. I don't care if it's by Zoom or in person. She's willing to partner. And so um, I, I spoke with her because they were supposed to meet with us. Mm -hmm. and, and she said, well, Kim, you know, we got to be there on the floor. I said, like, I know where I'm going to be. And so we're going to, you know, um, po postpone that meeting and, and, and then have it soon. But mm -hmm. she, she's working hard. She's a mm -hmm. voice. And she's a strong voice because y'all know mm -hmm. she served mm -hmm. for um, several terms mm -hmm. in the Senate. Mm -hmm. yeah. So she's someone that I look up to as a mentor because mm -hmm. she knows a lot. Um, and she's done a lot. She's a great person. And let me let me speak to your chief. I did I did um, I did file a bill because I know you were telling me the need that you guys have. So I'm pretty sure you've seen. Sort of. Sort of. I'm right one. You gonna ask me now? You can ask me now. I filed because <laughs> you called me in time. And see, this is the thing: is we have what we call local bills, mm -hmm. and so the local bills had to be filed by March the 9th. And then we have appropriation bills because we have the budget. So that's by April 4th. So that's why I'm trying to make sure that I'm traveling and getting all the information from people 
And when I'm on these um, different committees, we go in and we look at certain things and say, what can we, what can be placed in here? What can be placed there? And I try to go to all the city council meetings so I can meet all the um, city council members and all the county commissioners and staff because you guys are the boots on the ground. And so my job is to make sure I stay connected to you because you can tell me things that I don't know. And we're supposed to work in partnership together. So I was able to make it to Macclesfield last night. Um, I'll be able to make it to Neela soon. They told me when their meeting was. I did meet some of the commissioners in Raleigh at the town state dinner. Um, and I made it to the Edgecombe County Commissioner meeting, Rocky Mount City Council meeting, Tarboro City Council meeting. Um, Princeville City Council meeting. Now, I've been going all over now. Yeah. Because I've been, I, I, what I truly believe in, it is not, it's not a good thing to ask people to support you if you're not willing to interact with them so they can contact you whenever they want something or need something. And people told me one time I was crazy because I was putting stuff on Facebook when the pandemic happened and un unemployment was going on and people was trying to get through and they couldn't. I put it out there, call me. It's, you tell people to call you, they rock it. Because we got the people in the office that got a direct line to the people. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. So my job is to make sure I'm representing you in the state when you have issues and when you have concerns. My job is not to make an issue um, partisan. It's not whether it's a Democrat or Republican. Because when I served on the city council in Greenville, I served there for nine years. I served as the mayor. And I served two terms in the House. No issue had a D or an R. <laughs> exactly. A pothole was a pothole. <laughs> exactly. Nobody called me and said, look, this, this pothole is a Democratic pothole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, nobody did that. And when they called me, they knew that I was on the job. And I just, I got that history of making sure that I fight hard for people. Because that's what it's about. And it's hard to navigate the system. It's hard to navigate the state. It's hard to sometimes navigate the city. And people don't know the processes. And when they don't know, my job is to try to help them figure it out. And then when I talk to you and you tell me about things like this process with the students, how long it's taken, then our job is to make legislation based on that. So we go back. We talk to people. What can we do to speed that process up? And so that's when I give that information to Angela and her whole team and say, what can we do to speed that process up? Because that could be the difference of life and death when it comes to different people. Yes. Being referred to some of the places that we're opening up. We don't want to wait until it's too late. No. Right. Oh, so, yeah, so, um, yeah, thank you for that. And we're looking at supporting uh, Edgecombe County school system uh, as we go forward in accommodating the students on the Edgecombe side of the Rocky Mount. Um, and our sheriff's department will become the resource officer for, for the school system. Um, and we have probably, and I'm in Rocky Mount, but Edgecombe County Sheriff's Department, uh, they, they're they assisting us with everything that is happening and covering the whole county at the same time. Uh, and looking at that uh, our Sheriff's Department of law enforcement is probably one of the lowest paid in the ground. And, and some way, somehow, we need to look at how can we really, and thank God for Sheriff Knight that has stayed there for so long and supported Sheriff Cleac in coming in. And those two, uh, you can't, uh, you know, uh, as Tom Jones said, they're the hardest working <laughs> in the business. <laughs> And so, and so, and so we've been trying to look at ways. We've been looking at it from a city standpoint as well. Or how can we really support Edgecombe County uh, Sheriff's Department uh, in, in the hard work? And I'm in Canada. And when I call Sheriff, he's always there. Well, I, I can tell you this. Um, even when I was on the campaign trail, I went to his facility and he gave me a full right. tour. And I met his staff, and he was telling me the different things they needed when it comes to cars, because you can't have a car falling apart, but then you expect them to respond to a call. So he let me know some of the things he needed, and, and um, I, I pledged to fight for him because, again, that's our safety. And we, won't, we all want safety and security. There's nothing like feeling unsafe in your own home or your own area. So um, I, I support, and I will continue to support um, law enforcement and what they're doing. That's, and I, I also had a ride along with the chief here 
-hmm. And um, he took me around here and mm -hmm. Macclesfield. Mm -hmm. That was when I was talking about. We, we need police. Thanks, we don't have a police mm -hmm. officer. It's from accepting us. Mm -hmm. And we're having to take it out of our budget right now. So we really need to see about Michael still getting more coverage. Because some of the seniors are getting concerned about drug activity seen in the park there. Uh, yeah. So we're, we really need, they're coming on the weekends, I think. Right. We only had 20 hours. 20, oh, we. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In my no. so we and need just started getting that, really. Mm -hmm. And, so and while you're good. talking about cars, um, and particularly for the that's county, good. I had a concern about the state providing grants for electric vehicles. And my concern is this. We're uh, in an area probably all along um, the East Coast here where a whole lot of hurricanes, tornadoes, storms, and all this stuff is kind of stuff come in. It tears down the electric lines. It tears up electricity. So now a storm come in. We can go get gas if you've got a gas pump that's working. You know, you can put some gas in and stuff and still be able to ride or get where you need to go. If these electric vehicles get out here, Storm come in and tear it up. How you gonna get from <laughs> How you gonna go? <laughs> Look, let me ask you a question. I don't know. <laughs> 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 Look, you asking me. I don't know. <laughs> but, but instead of providing grants for electric vehicles, I think you need to provide grants for um um law enforcement departments. Uh, gas vehicles, gas cars, not electric cars, but gas cars um, to law enforcement. And then that that would help their budgets um, because they wouldn't have to, you know, a lot so much for vehicles and hopefully it would help them uh, and help provide the services. So instead of putting grants for electric vehicles, put the grants for law enforcement. And, and then, we, and and we, then my look, other thing. Now, first, you know, I ain't gonna override them because they gotta tell me what they want, right? Yeah. right? So, if they tell me they want electric vehicles, you need to be talking to them <laughs> <laughs> and, and get that straight. But, but, but what we're trying to, what, what I'm trying to do is make sure that I show support because there are different needs yeah. that sometimes um, within their budget or within the county budget that can't be covered. Mm -hmm. And so when I know about those things, I try to make sure I support those things. But, so that's but, what but my main concern do. really was gas gas vehicles mm -hmm. as opposed to electric vehicles in the area that we live in. Mm -hmm. And uh, if any monies are going to be granted or given out, mm -hmm. it just seems to make no sense to me to give it for a gas vehicle. What's your name? Uh, can't take it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell them you said that. I was just thinking that. I have one more thing in regards to transportation. Mm -hmm. She paid attention to what's the minimum. Go ahead. I wanted to know why we have so many four way stop signs on one. Yeah. We got about three or four of them jokers. Oh, and, and, and people don't know when they're supposed to go. And I want to know why there's so many. Why is there so many on one road? And what um is it are there um do the stats show an indication that all these four-way stops are needed, or was this just somebody trying to do a project to get out of school? Or <laughs> and, and what is the effectiveness of these four-way stops? Because you you got four. Oh, 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 what is 43 or 42? 43. Then you see all that four way stuff. That's what held me up. Well, I think the first thing is the first thing we have to do is figure out if it's a state road or not. And if it's a, if it's a state road, I can I can take it back and ask them. And I'll see, I'll see what they tell me. Again, you have people in the area that serve on these committees. You need to talk to them. Mm -hmm. Just like Monday night when I was at the commission meeting, I brought up, I already knew the answer, but I brought up about mm -hmm. the commissioner giving a report on the bridge down here. Mm -hmm. I already knew the answer. Mm -hmm. But <coughs> one of the ladies on the commission board said, I'm on that committee, and I can tell you. So what people got to do, you got to get involved. Go to your county commission meeting and stuff. You got people in the area that serve at the bottom level. It got to go to them before it get to her. Mm -hmm. 
So you need to start, you know. So you gotta, so you, so you gotta, you gotta know how to, you got, you gotta know how to work the process. The system work when you work the system. So you gotta learn how to work the system. What did it say about the bridge? It'll be open April fourteenth. The one in the, um, the one in um, Leggett is uh, this Friday. It's the bridge you took me to, right? It's supposed to be open when? April the fourteenth. So we took it to the Friday. Because I wanted to. I, I want to see what you guys see. I want to see it from, from your level. Yeah. So when people start asking me questions and saying things, I need to know where I'm represented. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I encourage all of you to, when you have different events, there's only one of me now. I try to make as many as I can because I want people to come out and meet the people where they are and see what the issues are and the challenges are. So I've, I've been around a little bit. I ain't gonna say for all you have been around. <laughs> you probably surprised though, when I said I went with the sheriff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I, I went and visited um, her church. I was like, I'm gonna come see what y'all got going on. Family reunion. Family, yeah. I, 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 listen, I bum rushed a family reunion. She, you know, just because I, I, I knew some good food. There you go. I told Trey, I said, yeah, I sent her sneak. I said, boy, she was. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's that, but that's that's my job. I hate now, that. if I, I stay in Pitt County the whole time, y'all be like, see, she don't care nothing about us. Uh, and I just got to make sure I have the balance because I don't want Pitt County to say, see, she don't care nothing about us no more. <laughs> so I, I, I do both. That's why I'm doing my listening to all over. But I'm, I'm also trying to make sure I get my information out. So you guys call and say, this is going on, that's going on, this is, you know, what we have at the state level. But he, he brings up a very good point. That's why it's important also to stay connected with your local officials because they know a lot. And when, when the state sends money, we send it We send it to the county or the city. That's where we send the money, and then it's dispersed from there, whatever the projects are. So if you stay in contact with them, then they can tell you what they got, how much they got, and when it is going to certain places. Because we can't just send it to, you know, who was working right on the project because we're not in the business of doing that as a state since we're the big arm, but we will pass the monies down to the cities and the states. So we do have uh, I'm on transportation committee for right now as well as Boone Blackwell. Mm -hmm. Evan Power is for Edgecombe County mm -hmm. on transportation. Um, Melvin, Mr. Melvin Mitchell is our representative mm -hmm. and uh, we meet in Rocky Mountain at, the, at uh, the city hall, and we will be having a meeting on the 21st. Uh, and so everybody's welcome to come to those meetings uh, or call your representative. And I'm gonna make sure I text you because I want to know why we got so many um, four-way stop signs on the <laughs> <laughs> But I'm saying that's, a, that's yeah. a good question. It is a good question, and I can tell you one of the reasons because we. Though they do record the accidents right. that happen at those at those crossings, mm -hmm. and you know, up around Southwest, uh, we've had a lot of fatal accidents of students around that area traveling 43 back and forth, mm -hmm. and so uh, they're building now social economics to learn how to stop and see who can go first. And, uh, so far, we've been uh, pretty mindful. But at the same time, talked about so Kanita, we've been looking at and talking to to uh, our sheriff. It's more feasible for us to support the expansion of the sheriff department having more officers right. than for Kanita to, to try to have a law enforcement That's right. ourselves. That's right. And so, <laughs> and so we've been really saying okay, and even with Rocky Mountain, we're forty some police police officer down and and we're looking at is it more feasible for us to, to collaborate with the sheriff department and how we how we manage crime together rather than just one of us trying to do it by ourselves. And so we've really been looking at how do we make sure that we do the proper collaboration and that when all of us go up we go up together. You know? And so um, it's been a bit challenging, but anything great is worth the challenge. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're really looking at both the Rocky Mountain from Canada. How do we support our sheriff's department so they can have everything they need that they can cover us the way they want to cover us? They do a great job now. But think about a weekend interruption with what they really need. 
they'll do an even better job. 40 down? Yeah, we'll 40 down. Mm -hmm. and, and so mm -hmm. the collaboration has been what helps us because you keep us see us working together across county lines, across city lines, and that we're doing it together and we're not competing against each other. You know, we really want to do this together. You know, uh, and we want our sheriff's department just as strong and our cities are just as strong as anyone else. And so we'll be coming with you to see how we can get some more help. Senator, I'm concerned that I have, and I've heard other seniors, uh, I'm 70, 73, uh, my wife's 64, we're both on Social Security. She was a nurse for 40 years until she had to stop because she had terminal, she had now has terminal cancer. But I'm concerned that even with limited income or no income, that we're gonna be a victim of tax increase on property taxes and we wind up losing homes, not, not just us, but anybody in that age group. Uh, because as the cost of living continues to go grow up, go up, uh, everything, whatever you're talking about, is increasing. It's more today probably than it was six weeks ago. But I don't know what role the state plays in working on the, the break for uh, homestead exemptions. But there are a number of states uh, where once you get 65, you go and file for homestead exemption, and when it's granted, you pay no more property tax. I know that we're a poor county. You know, I, I understand that. But if we have seniors that start having problems paying for their homes uh, and, and paying their taxes, we'll have a real issue. In Isham County, it is tax base for property is the second largest of the 100 counties. So you got 100, and then you got 99, and that's Isham County as it relates to the tax rate. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. But we are one of the poorest counties mm -hmm. as it relates economically. Yes, rural industry. Mm -hmm. No industry. Well, I will look into that. Thank you. Yeah, our tax rate is 95 cents per hundred. Mm -hmm. We are the 95th. I mean. Well, well, I'm talking about as far as poorest goes. Mm -hmm. uh, came across something the other day. Uh, there's five <coughs> poor, more, you know, worse off than we are. So, uh, you know, that's a that's a bad combination. Mm -hmm. And then you got to add some more taxes onto that ninety-five cent. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you got to add uh, other like. Uh, for trash and other stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it's going to put it well over a dollar or something. If you and own like, a vehicle, you've got to pay for your you got vehicle, to pay for your vehicle tag. And stuff. And tag. But so if you're a senior citizen, you could well come out paying at least $125 or $150 per month, per month, just to reach your tax uh, obligations. That's a lot, depending upon what your Social Security is. Thank you, ma'am. Homestead exemption. And thank you for coming out. Mm -hmm. yeah. no problem. That's, that's, a, that's important. That's my job. It. I'm supposed to do that. Yeah. I, I, I have, have one more case question case. Of, about that other committee you own, which, um, which is <laughs> forestry and <laughs> forestry and conservation. <laughs> but, you, don't you deal yeah, with that? What's your question? <laughs> they, they just cutting down so many trees. I mean, you know, they just and and I'm just wondering. But I'm wondering now when a storm comes through here, it ain't got nothing to block that wind. It's just gonna come straight through and pick up all them broke down trees and stuff and throw them in my house. The power winds are going down. Think, I, that's I think right. That's down right. The trees is a sign of the economy because people are needing money. Mm -hmm. And they, and they got those trees that are growing, standing out there, you know, and, and they're cutting them down and selling them. And one, one, one day they said, brother, brother, cut them down, let the forest fire come and burn them up. That's what they were saying, too. Mm -hmm. Say what, Ann? It's scared of a forest fire. 
a part time on the ground up. Uh -huh. so I, I, I just I just wondered mm -hmm. if there is a rhyme and a reason, you know, not just indiscriminately cutting down trees or uh, um, just to meet the housing demand because they're building two hundred and fifty thousand dollars houses in Edgecombe County and our salary base won't even support that. So what are you doing? Down there in um um what you call it? Um Prince Woods. She gonna talk about housing. Now I've been in Prime Talk for sixty two years. And we have a problem with affordable housing. We got some of this stuff around here been standing up for sixty two years. <laughs> And I was wondering, could Pine Top ever get grant money that we could build affordable housing for a senior citizen, not the one having a baby they don't want, but for a senior citizen to come in and live in an affordable, decent area? I feel like Pine Top, we really need affordable housing in this area. We don't have any. You can ride through the town, baby. We don't have any. We got old abandoned buildings in every neighborhood that need to come down, even if we have to let HUD come in here and put affordable housing. I mean, because that's People like want to school. live in Pine Park. You ain't got nowhere to stay. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if you get affordable housing in our area, it will bring more people here. It's, it's, it's sad what some people have to live in. Mm -hmm. It's sad. It's sad. I agree, and that's been one of the major issues all over. Mm -hmm. in, in Greenville, I know we, we've had that same thing right in, in the county area. And when I first said, that's one of the things I need to work on, people's like, eh, I don't want. I said, okay. And then they came back to me and said, dang, you was right. Yeah. Because <laughs> it is it is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And people, a lot of people don't have places to stay. And then a lot of people were displaced mm -hmm. because they were paying like 500 <coughs> Then they came in and said, you need to pay $1,200 mm -hmm. um, in apartments and things. And we'll put well, we only have out. two sets of decent apartments. Mm -hmm. But you got 500 mm -hmm. people on the list, waiting list. So I feel like you put affordable housing mm -hmm. in the area that people can afford to live in. Can we put office farms into the housing piece? Say again? Can we use office farms for housing? Uh-huh. If the city got office farms, mm -hmm. county, so we can use that mm -hmm. for housing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I, think I was going to, if I bring up some of this segues into one, I was looking at a couple of the bills. I think this is in the house. We haven't really discussed it, so I don't know if it would be mm -hmm. agreement of the councilors and everything, but there's supposed to be a, an infrastructure bill there that rewards towns and cities for allowing their zoning to allow more multifamily mm -hmm. and larger houses. Mm -hmm. It's being considered in the house right now. Mm -hmm. And I guess, I don't know if it comes to house, it comes to house into you, right? In so you're probably going to be getting, I couldn't really tell, I was just looking. It's funny because I was thinking, because we need infrastructure here too, so it would be beneficial for us because mm -hmm. it says something about it can help you rebuild your sidewalks, which we need help on, mm -hmm. and other things, handicap accessibility in the streets. And, and, and our zoning laws are quite non restrictive. So, you know, if it's something, you know, we'd have to debate it, but it's something that the, the town maybe uh, could, could use and would be supportive of. So, that's mm -hmm. a bill there that, you know, that I was just reading about that. I'll keep my eye on the I think it's HB. I can get the number 296 Could you get it, friend, so we can look at it? 296. I think it was HB 296. I had it on my computer. Uh, Mr. Smith, he walked out. Mm -hmm. and all that sounds good, but you got to have the people willing to give up the land and, 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 and people to invest. I was in this same room before the 1999 flood. I served on a committee. It was a guy that came down from Raleigh that we met with every month until the flood came. I didn't live in the city limit, but I was very active. Um, bird can tell you. But we was talking about these same things. We were talking about what we're going to be coming to Edgecombe County. You need a housing. Mm -hmm. Because we saw that the QVC and all that stuff was coming way back then, before the 99 flood. Mm -hmm. So if, if, if people have given up their land here in Pine Talk, then you can have all this stuff. But you can't just do it. It sounds good. But if the people ain't willing to give up the land, I was told that the casket company, when it burnt down, that they wanted to rebuild here, but nobody was selling the land. And I work in Rocky Mountain, Nash County, and for years I didn't even know where it was. So one day some people from Pine Talk uh, worked there. I stopped to the store right before I get to where I work at. And I said, where y'all go? They said, the casket coming right back here. Mm -hmm. I pass right by it every day. Way in Nash County. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about stuff that's been out there for years. And all that sounds good, but you got to have the people 
willing to give up the land and you got to have people to invest. If, um, Reverend Jonah can tell you that. It's a lot of stuff you want to do. But you can't do it. I mean, these houses, these property people got, if they don't fix it up or, or let you have it, then ain't nothing you can do. Well, one of the things that I know that um, we did at the city level in, in um, Greenville was we incentivized those developers that came in to build affordable housing. So we gave them um, tax credits and incentivized them. And so, so many of, like if they got an apartment complex, so many of those had to be affordable housing mm -hmm. in order for them to get that tax credit. So it takes a lot of times a lot of the cities and towns to be willing to look at what they have um, to allow that to happen. But then it also takes attracting those um, developers to be able to come in. And I think that we're probably, if you look at it, some of the other areas are landlocked, right? Well, we have more land around here. And so you're probably gonna have a lot of companies trying to come, but they would want to come where they could grow. So people would have to be willing to sell land in order for them to come in as a company. Um, and then that company at the same time, they want to be able to invest in where they are and also have a workforce of people willing to work at their company. Because if I got a company and people ain't willing to work, then I ain't gonna come because I'll be losing that money. So it's a process of everybody having to work together so there is growth. It's gonna take some time, but everybody has to work together for that. Everybody. But that's another thing too. I, I like when they said QVC came, they couldn't find not QVC, but uh, Sam Club. They couldn't find people to work. I work at an aerospace company. I've never been to college. Been there, been there thirty six years. Mm -hmm. I say, if you build it, they'll come. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. So and 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 on my job, and and it's funny because we used to have about seven hundred people down, about four hundred. And um, I be looking at the people that coming through the door, and I be like. Actually, where are the white people going to work at? We make good money. I make good money. But I be wondering where these people going to work at. I mean, we're a majority black out there just about. And these people have not been to college. So I say if it comes, the people will go to work. <laughs> and, and that's what we need. We need people to come. But see, it's that, that mentality that people got out there. And because people like us ain't rebutting it. You know, I, I I get mad every time I go to me and they talking about we uneducated. I got a high school diploma, graduated from Southwest. I'm one of the dumbest, I'm one of the brightest either. But like I said, I'll be your airplane, for fighter jets for the military. So, been doing it for 36 years, tanks and all that. Talking about land, I was on the committee for time time here, whole different time. All the J. Running Foundation, we got to help put, put a great here. We got, got everything, lining up everything and couldn't get no land. When we did get some land, it was in the trunk that nobody didn't want or nobody wanted to go down there. Mm -hmm. So that's the problem. They won't get enough land for uh, for free ground for the public. A playground? Free ground. Enough, <laughs> enough land for it. Mm -hmm. they, they, they got one piece of land right, right down off of where the town shop at now on the right. They, they, they donated that. That that a big dish went through that. That's but more than that. We don't want to cramp around. We want to play around. Still ain't got no playground. Still ain't got no playground. And one o'clock, I was going five times. I said, that's enough. Five, five times. They didn't build enough. Yeah. But they saying right now that Pine Top is going to be the biggest single citizen home you've ever seen. How many years they gonna take this? <laughs> the only way now, because think about it, the young kids, but they, but they finish, they not coming back. Right. Matter of fact, I talked to my granddaddy, uh, <laughs> but she come from Germany, she gonna be here for about two months. Then she, then she, then she going back up north somewhere, she not gonna leave anymore. That's happened to every family now. The kids finish school, they not coming back. So this gotta be a, this gotta be a great big single citizen home. <laughs> well, people got to be willing. I mean, the growth can't be just one person on, on one part. That's we right. all know there's stages to it. And so um, those individuals who have the land, they got to be willing to sell it or something in order for other people to come in, for companies to come in, for housing developments to come in, because that's how you grow. And if they're not willing to sell it, it's going to be hard, like you said. Especially when you have grants and things that people are offering, but then you can't even use it because you don't have a place to do it. I, I do know that um, in when we look at some of the areas,
lands because I knew in Greenville we were looking at some of the areas where like flood land so certain things couldn't be built mm -hmm. on that but you have to look around for those places that are not and even have some of the um, houses built um, up is what they call them have, right. yep. have them be built mm -hmm. higher in case mm -hmm. or in the event of a flood because mm -hmm. we say a hundred year flood and that means within the 100 years, mm -hmm. it might be one year, it might be year 50, it might be year 100. You don't know. Maybe next year. Right. So we, we always year. have to consider that. I know in um, Princeville, they had a lot, like back-to-back. -back. And so um, the Army Corps of Engineers have been working um, with them. But in the appropriations meeting for the Agriculture Committee, one of the things that we went through and they showed um, Princeville, and it was talking about the, the floods and all that good stuff. So I was asking how much more money are we going to give them to make sure they can shore that up, not to continue to flood over and over and over again. So I'm, I'm waiting for um, the staff from DEQ to be able to get back with me. So I'm trying to fight for every area, everything that I see, because as I learn the area from you guys, then I'm sharing with them what I've learned and those things that we need. But that's why I want to make sure that you guys stay in touch with me and let me know what those needs are so we can work on them. Now, it can take time, but I'm going to fight. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fight for it. Now, Battle Road, on a little staff from Pine Talks, probably, at less than a mile. But, but when floods occur, that, don't that area get yeah. flooded? And it's been flooded repeatedly, too. Now, I know part of that area has been, um, what, put in that, green that zone. what? The green zone. The green zone. But then part of it has not been, and you, uh, yeah, the part that connects right yeah. to Pine Tops. But it's, it's, it's some land there, too, that is flooded often that mm -hmm. impacts mm -hmm. people, and they can't get the services because they're connected to, because of Pine Tops. So what they look at is Pine Tops, but they don't look at the people in the rural part that's connected to Pine Tops. At least that's what happened. When, when the flood came, mm -hmm. oh, one of the floods, I, you know. But you said Bynum Road? Yeah, Bynum Road. Y'all okay. help me here now. You <laughs> might not all the way right, don't you? You know, you are right. Something some new kind that they really meant it is uh, uh, half been flooded and half <laughs> been left. Yeah. I think if they elevate either by, the, by raising the soil level or whatever, but uh, Senator, I would like to see you uh, unite all of our cities and the Edgecombe County and more of a summit where we come together and really look at how how we build strategies and how we support each other. Uh, and I think it would be great if our leadership from the county commissioners and leadership from our cities, small and great, will come together in a four-hour, I mean, a strategy session to really look at how do we support each other and how do we work together. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, you, so you hear that, right? Okay, I'm, look, I'm just making you sit next to the right one. So I just want to make sure that they, because, I mean, if any partnership with me, you just let me know because I'm, I'm willing to come. Because it does take more of a regional approach. Yeah. Because when you work individually, you just get a whole lot less. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when you when you come together, you're stronger. Yeah. And so that regional approach for growth. Because if one area starts growing, of course, it goes over into mm -hmm. other areas. So I mm -hmm. think that's that's key. And so that's a good idea. And I'm 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 here for it. Thank you. So you just suggested that we have a regional summit. I did. The <laughs> <laughs> only they put it together. Oh, yeah, the local I, people put it together. That's what, that's I what mean, I you can't put it all on your on your leadership. Oh, yeah, it ain't going to be all on me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to show up. But like you said, with all of the different um, towns, their, their council, their elected officials, being able to, to come together, find the location, mm -hmm. probably Edgecombe Community College, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, having a place there and, and identifying the goals that you want to work on. Mm -hmm. I think that's the major thing because mm -hmm. you got to know where you want to go. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't know where you want to go, it's just like you're there. <laughs> right. So I think that um, coming together um, as a regional area to figure out what do you what do you want in the area. And I think most people are wanting economic development. They're wanting affordable housing because they want that growth. They want jobs so that they can survive. And so it takes um, coming together with the same goals 
and then working on how how best to make that happen. Yes. And then, of course, in that process, anything that affects you from the state level, mm -hmm. then that's where I come in okay. to see how I can help help push that. Okay. Now, going back to um, the storms coming through and knocking out the power, I know with us, our wastewater plant has a permanent generator. It you know it's exercised every week, comes on, we lose power. We don't have that for our water our water towers and the pumps, the wells. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that in Macclesfield we really need is permanent a permanent power source for when the power does go out. Because you can you can survive without lights, but if you don't have water and a way for people mm -hmm. to use the restroom and get rid of it, you're gonna have an uprising. That's a good question. Okay. So power source for uh, water. Mm -hmm. Like for end pine tops. Mm -hmm. yeah. we'll make sure I don't know. Do. I want to make sure. I don't have one here. <laughs> That's a question that hasn't been asked yet. It's a very good yes, question. Yes, it has been. <laughs> You don't know, do you? you no, she just asked. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> Very good. Well, well I, did, I did write that down because I want to make sure that we, you know, look into that and see. No. And my job is to, I ask staff because, see, they're the professionals, right? Uh -huh. no. And so good, when, when they really sit in front of us, I ask them, and like, what do we do and how do we deal with this and, and what's the steps and, and have them to um, answer that question for me. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. Yes, so what are you leaving home this morning? So again, what time did you leave home this morning? I left probably like at 8 because I had to drop the baby off at school. And then I, I went to the doctor this morning to check on my leg. They told me I don't have to be on those crutches. And I can start, but I have to keep this on for two weeks to walk. Okay. And then And then you've been arriving. Okay. I left home 5 o'clock this morning to go to work. Oh, and, and it's eight o'clock now, and, and you have had a long day. So uh, I wanna I wanna say this, and then I want you to go home because my wife got a doctor appointment tomorrow, so I ain't got to go work in the morning. So I'm, I'm gonna be in Greenway in the morning. I'll be down in your area. But what I want to say is, I've been following you uh, when you was a coach at what's the school? South Central. South Central. Yeah. And then when you became a uh, commissioner. And went to jail and all that good stuff. Been the mayor. <laughs> but I just want to let them know you're a fighter. You, you're staying. You're staying. So I just want them to know that you are a fighter for standing up for what's right. Yeah. And and, 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 and so um, we got a good senator. When um, Senator Don Davis, um, well, I knew he was going to run because I go way back with that when him and he wanted to get it when he came was, and I had to tell him, no, wait your turn. But, um, Anyway, when you took over his position, I knew we were going to have a great person following him. So, um, thank you for all you have done and all you're going to do. And I want you to go home and get some rest. <laughs> yeah. I would say thank you to each and every one of you. Once you're on the um, 
on the National Guard Armory uh, truck when y'all rode through Green with all that water. Yes. So she ain't scared because I was scared for y'all. I ain't no way the way I was getting that truck rolled through all that water. I felt like <laughs> if we was going to go down, <laughs> they had some life there. <laughs> <laughs> that one was hot. A lot of people couldn't see their houses because they were in the schools and the buildings. So I did the Facebook Live so they could see yeah, if, it lived, if it was flooded or not. Because that's my job. So I wanted to make sure that I was looking out for the people. Yes. 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 Three days a week now. Oh, good. That's why the printer's over Three days a week, y'all hear it. They hear it. The rebuild program. I guess. Good job, man. Good job. All right. Okay, because I got a little rally for giving some help.